Well, I got away with the wife, my son, and another friend this weekend. We went south, and we started off this morning going to out for breakfast in a very unusual breakfast place. The ceiling was covered with hats, and I was told that the owner will come along and grab your hat and give you one of his hats and stick it up on the wall. The breakfast was uncanny. It was, it was only $8 for the meal, and it was really, really good. So we started off on our trip and we went through a number of eucalyptus forests. And I'd love to talk in great detail about eucalyptus and how they spread, but we soon got out of that and we got into the vineyards. I was with a good friend who invited us to go wine tasting for a couple of days. Yeah. And he drove, uh, he showed up with his Bentley. So as a passenger, I was, really having a good time because I usually drive. So my friend here took us on this trip down Southern California. It was about uh, three and a half hours south of where we live. And I was amazed at the number of vineyards. Everywhere we went, there were vineyards. And it seems like the last time I went down here, this was all almond orchards. So a lot of the almond orchards have been torn up and replaced with vineyards. Many of these are very new vineyards. And I know that there is a lot of anger about what's happening down in Southern California with uh, water. Because these owners of the vineyards are quite wealthy, so they can afford to pay for the water. And because they're using so much of the water, it seems like the price of the water is going up. And a lot of the farmers that are out there that aren't growing grapes are suffering because of the increase in water costs and also the uh, the amount of water there is. So this is a still, it's actually a panoramic picture that I took from my iPhone that I'm just really impressed with. This is looking out towards the ocean from up off of Highway 46. If you ever get a chance to go out this way, it's really, really beautiful. We started off in a city called Cayuga, which was right by the ocean. We stayed in a cute little motel. And then on the way up and out of there, we went through this area, which was just, just outstanding. So for any of you that have not been to California, this is a part of California that is very, very beautiful. The beaches from the very tip of the bottom, southern beaches all the way up to the north of California are outstanding and they're also very very different uh, this particular beach has a lot of driftwood and there was a lot of driftwood sculptures on the beach little shelters that people put up I guess they put tarps over them or something but we had an amazing time it was so beautiful the weather was perfect it was a little bit windy as you can probably tell by some of the wind sound in some of the video here but this was uh, this was in Cambria, which is also down near the, the area where we spent the night. And our ultimate destination was we were heading towards a beach at a place called uh, Piedra Blanca, White Rock. And there's a big island rock out there that's covered with, uh, with bird manure that makes it look white. But oh, I we were just, we were just, blown away by how beautiful it is. You know, it's been raining a lot. Everything is so green and so lush. It doesn't look like this most of the year. This this is a really special time when all the wildflowers, this is all sour grass. It was just, just popping up just everywhere. There's another one of those uh, sculptures. They were everywhere along this whole beach. There was lots of driftwood and people created these really unusual little shelters along there. So we, uh, we got out and we hiked the beaches and we hiked the, the coast quite a ways. And, and our friend said he had a, a final destination that he wanted to take us to. That was, um, it, w it was a bit of a surprise. You know, he, he kind of mentioned it, but I didn't really know what to expect. This is at Piedra Blanca. Um, there was a lot of the same yellow sour grass. But what really blew me away were the elephant seals. Elephant seals have rookeries in different areas in California. 
And this particular rookery, there was, I, I couldn't tell you how many there were there, but you know, probably over a thousand of these giant elephant seals. And there was a docent there that gave me a lot of information about these creatures. If you look at them, a lot of them look like they're dead. And I said, they don't look like they're breathing. And she told me that elephant seals can hold their breath for over 20 minutes. And when they're on the shore, they lay there and they're not breathing. They're, they're in a state of apnea, like sleep apnea, where they don't breathe. And they'll go for 20 minutes and be as still as can be. Look at those. Those guys have their heads in the water everywhere you look. Another thing that I learned is at this time of year, these are all breeding fem females and juvenile elephant seals. None of the giant bull elephant seals were here. These, these are all the, the females and the younger ones. There were some smaller ones and some juvenile ones. There was obviously there was male juveniles. But I mean, as far as we could see in both directions, the beach was just covered with these enormous animals. And I was told that the bull elephant seal is double the length of these giant females, over 16 feet long, and thousands of pounds, and their heads are twice as big. They're, they're just massive, and they have these, you know, just huge, huge mouths. And the, the sounds that they were making were just, just unbelievable. So if you ever get a chance to see this, it, it'll blow your mind. It, it really amazed me. Well, we got back on the road, headed home. It was a long trip home. That's that's Hearst Castle way up off in the distance there. Oh, I forgot to mention that one of the locations when we were in Cayuga, uh, there was this tree that was being supported by all these props. And without the props, it would have certainly fallen over. And you can see that the props are digging in. But this is a question I'm going to put out to some of you guys out there. This is a coastal tree. There's the foliage. You can see what the, the bark looks like. It's got these little corns on it. And I don't know what it is. So somebody out there, help me out.